I am interested in selling my home and would like to know what is involved. You have come to the right place. When were you interested in selling your home? I just received a job transfer. I need to relocate right away. How long have you been in your current home? I have lived in my home for about 10 years. As I'm sure that you are aware, the market has fallen in the past year. People are more likely to make money if they have owned their own home for a while. Will I be able to recover the money I paid for my home? It is hard to say, but whatever house you buy will also be costing you a lot less. What is the next step in selling my home? I would like to meet with you tomorrow to look at your property, and then you and I can figure out a contract. I am looking for a realtor to help me sell my home. I would be happy to help you with any questions that you might have. When were you thinking of selling your home? I am interested in moving up to a bigger home, but first I need to sell the one I now own. Have you owned your home for a long time? I just bought my home two years ago. I think you probably know that the market is not all that great. You are more likely to see a profit if you have owned for eight years or more. Will I be losing money if I sell right now? It is impossible to predict with certainty what will happen, but you can purchase a replacement home at a lower rate also. What can I do next to get the ball rolling on this sale? If it works for you, I would like to come over and see your home. Then we can draw up a contract. I am considering selling my home and like information on doing so. It would be my pleasure to answer any questions that you might have. Were you interested in selling in the near future? I am just checking out the possibility of selling as I am thinking of moving to Hawaii. Is your home a re recent purchase or have you owned it for a while? The house has been in my family for years, but I just became the owner six months ago when my mother passed away. Housing prices have fallen quite a bit. The longer you have owned your home, the greater the profit. Am I going to lose my shirt selling my home right away? It will all kind of even out. You may sell low, but you can also buy low. What should we be doing to get the process started? If it fits into your schedule, I could meet you tomorrow morning and we could take a look at your property. The next step would be us both signing a contract. Thank you for coming to look at my house. I really wanted to take a look and help give you an idea of what we need to do. When will people come to look at my house? Basically, there are two ways people can view your home. They can come to an open house, or they can come with a realtor to view it during a private appointment. Will people from other real estate offices be involved, or just from your office? Your house is going to be listed as a multiple listing, so that it will have the maximum exposure to a variety of people. When will I know when people are going to come to see my house? We will set the parameters in the contract, but usually you will receive at least four hours of notification that someone is coming. What happens during an open house day? You will be expected to be away during an open house. I will take care of the details. I appreciate you dropping by to look at my home. It is useful for us to take a walk through your home together so that we make sure that we are on the same page. How do you show my home to potential buyers? We will have an open house or two on a weekend, and we also will show your home with private appointments during the week. Are you the only real estate office that will be showing my house? We are placing your house as a multiple listing. That way, people who don't work for my particular office can show your home to their clients. How will I know when to expect prospective buyers? That will be set in your contract. Usually, you will be given four hours notice. 
Can I stay home during an open house day? The seller is never at home during an open house. I personally will handle the showing of your home. Thanks for stopping by to evaluate my home. I want to make sure that you are very clear on what the steps are to selling a home. When can people come and see my home? We will have several open house weekends. Various realtors will also share your house during the week. Will I know all of the realtors who will be showing my home, or will they be strangers? Your house will be listed on what we call a multiple listing. That way it will be shown by a variety of realtors. Can people just drop in any time they feel like it? We usually try and give you at least four hours of notification that someone is coming to look at your home. Will I have to go away during an open house day? I will handle all of the work involved for the open house. The only thing that you need to do is to be somewhere else. How much do you think I should ask for my house? Well, there are a lot of factors involved in setting an asking price. What do you look at when setting an asking price? We need to look at the selling prices for similar homes in the area. These will vary according to the condition of the home, specific location, and lot size. Do I have to use comparisons as the asking price for my house? No, but a seller is not going to be able to get a loan if the selling price is a lot higher than what an appraiser feels the home is worth. Isn't it better to price my house really high and see what I can get? You shouldn't set the price of the house unrealistically high. Oftentimes, buyers are put off by this practice. Can I change my mind and lower my price if the home doesn't sell? Sure. You can always lower your asking price. I am not sure what the asking price for my house should be. <laughs> we have to take in a number of factors in setting an asking price. What do we need to consider in establishing an acceptable price for a home? The comparisons to other similar homes in your area give us a good indication of what your home is worth. Is the price that we get by looking at comparisons necessarily the asking price that I have to use for my home? You don't have to use that particular asking price, but the buyer is going to have trouble getting a loan if the house is priced too high. Should I just shoot for the moon and, if I have to lower the price, do it later? You should be realistic in your pricing, otherwise many potential buyers just walk away. Can we lower the asking price later if we need to? We can always reevaluate the asking price in a few weeks if we aren't getting any offers. What do you think the asking price of my home should be? There are many things to take into consideration when pricing a home. What is involved in figuring out an asking price? We need to combine many factors regarding your home to come up with an accurate value for your home. When you look at comparisons, do I necessarily have to ask that price? You don't have to use the price from the comparisons as your asking price. However, you must be realistic in what you ask. I think that I am going to set the price really high so that I have room to bargain with the buyers. Don't go overboard in trying to get top dollar. More often than not, that strategy backfires. Is it okay to lower the asking price if the first price isn't bringing in any offers? If the market doesn't support your asking price, we can always reevaluate our pricing and adjust it. My wife thinks I should get a lawyer to look at the contract. Well, it certainly wouldn't hurt to have a lawyer review it. How much does a lawyer cost? I don't know. A good real estate lawyer might cost $400 an hour. That can't be legal. Just think how much it'll be 10 years from now. Do you know any lawyers that are 
cheaper than that. You'd have to check the yellow pages or go online. There's no telling how many hours the lawyer will charge me for. Also, it might take a week or two just to get an appointment. I'd rather get this over with, so just show me where to sign. Good man. I've marked all the places for you to sign and date. My wife said to have a lawyer look at the contract. That's always a good idea. Do you know how much a lawyer runs? I've heard that they're about $400 an hour. Who can afford that? A few years ago, $100 an hour was outrageous. Can you help me find a cheaper lawyer? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. The lawyer will start at $400, but where will it end? Also, a good lawyer might not have time to see you immediately. My wife's going to kill me, but just show me where to sign. Now you're talking. The red stickers indicate where to sign and date. My wife told me to get a lawyer to review the contract first. A smart husband always does what his wife tells him. How much are lawyers charging nowadays? It's hard to believe, but I think they charge about $400 an hour. That's highway robbery. I think lawyers are making twice what doctors are making. Are there any lawyers that are cheaper than that? The best advice I can give you is to Google it. I can barely afford one hour, but certainly not two. Remember, it might take a few days just to set up an appointment. I really don't have the time or the money, so where do I sign? Your wife will thank you. Just sign and date where the little red stickers are. So, during the time that you are showing my house, how will my valuables be protected? A real estate company takes every precaution to see that your valuables are protected at all times. How will I know when someone will be looking at my home? We will typically give you at least four hours' notice on a weekend before we come by. Will you always accompany whoever is looking at my home? Your house is listed on the multiple listing. That means that people from a variety of real estate offices will be showing your house. How will the realtors get into my house if I am not at home? We put a lockbox on your house. The realtors will have a key to the lockbox and then they can get a key to your front door. What about people watching my stuff during an open house? We always suggest that you either store your jewelry in a safe or move it into a friend's house while your house is being shown. I'm worried about the security of my home while it is being shown. We do everything we can to protect your home and your valuables. Do people just come and look whenever they want to? During the week, we will let you know the night before if we will be bringing someone by the next day. I am assuming that someone from your office will always be there, right? Your home is listed exclusively with our office. We will be the only ones showing your home. Does everyone have a copy of my house key? Realtors have a special key to what is called a lockbox. Once they get into the lockbox, they can get a key to the house. I have heard horror stories from friends about being ripped off during their open house. Our company has invested in several cameras that we place in the key rooms while the house is being shown. I have heard horror stories about people's things being stolen while their house is being shown. We have a very good track record when it comes to home security. I am not so sure that I like the idea of people showing up whenever they want to pop in. We will always call at least 12 hours in advance if we are bringing somebody by to see your home. Are you the only one showing my house? To get a maximum exposure and a variety of buyers, your home is listed on the multiple listing. Many different realtors will be showing your home. Do you have to come and let the different realtors in when they want to come look at my house? The realtors can get a key to your house by unlocking a lockbox on your front door. They use it while they are there 
and return it when they leave. The thing I worry about the most is having my valuables stolen during an open house. Our realtors try to be very aware at all times of who is in the house and what they are doing. So, what do you think I should do to fix up the interior of my house? A fresh coat of paint is the number one improvement that you can make to your home. What colors do you think would be best? You need to go with fairly neutral tones. You want fairly contemporary colors that will go with a variety of furnishings. After paint, what is the next most important improvement that I can make? Remove any extra furnishings and personal items. Make your home look as uncluttered as possible. Should I get a new carpet? Your carpet is in really good shape. New owners typically want to pick out their own carpeting. How about improvements to the bathroom? New faucets are not that expensive and can quickly add a clean and more up-to-date look. What are your suggestions for some inexpensive fixes to help me get the best price for my home? Painting the interior of your home is not that expensive and greatly improves the appearance of your home. Should I go for trendy colors or more traditional tones? You don't want to make dramatic statements with paint, but don't go with just white either. What else can I do besides paint the inside of my home to improve its value? You need to get rid of any extra furniture or knickknacks. I need to know if I should replace the carpeting. Your carpeting is very worn. You might want to explore buying some attractive, inexpensive carpeting. How about improvements to the kitchen? You could inexpensively replace the linoleum flooring. That would really brighten things up. What do people usually do to improve the interior of their houses before they sell them? Your house looks very nice on the inside, but a fresh coat of paint always helps brighten a home's interior. I get confused when trying to pick out colors that other people might like. Lighter, neutral colors are usually best. They make rooms appear larger. The painting suggestion is a good one, but after that, what improvement will add value to my home? Your interior should have only the most basic of furniture. Either store or get rid of any extra clutter. What about replacing the floor covering? I know that your carpeting is not brand new, but with a good steam cleaning, I think that it will look great. Is there anything that I can do to the bathroom and the kitchen that wouldn't cost too much? New curtains or blinds do not cost that much and brighten up any room. Can you help me figure out some inexpensive ways to fix up the exterior of my home? Like the interior, the number one thing you can do is to repaint the outside of your home if it needs it. What do you think of the landscaping? Your lawn looks really good. Perhaps you could get some timers installed for your sprinklers. How about adding some flowers or something? Colorful flowers are always a nice addition to a yard to add curb appeal. What about fixing up the backyard? Make sure the lawn is well trimmed and the bushes are cut back. Can you think of any more overall suggestions for the exterior? Wash all the windows inside and out. What can I do to fix up the exterior of my home? I would say the number one thing that you can do is paint your home. But your home has been painted recently and looks great. What can I do about the landscaping? Your lawn looks a little dried out. I think all it needs is a little fertilizer and water. 
My front yard looks a little boring. How can I brighten it up? I would definitely put in some new plantings to liven your yard up a bit. Should I be worried about what my backyard looks like? You need to repair that section where your fence is falling down. What else can I do to make the exterior of the house look extra good to buyers? Make sure to keep the sidewalks and driveways swept clean at all times. I keep hearing about curb appeal and want to know how to achieve it. <laughs> the paint job on your home looks pretty good, but I would touch up the wooden trim a little where you have some peeling spots. I am not so sure that everyone will like the landscaping. Your landscaping is a disaster. To get top dollar for your home, you should replace it. Is there anything I can do to add some interest to my front yard? You have beautiful plants in your yard, although some of them aren't in bloom right now. Just add a few colorful flowers and pots. Is the appearance of the backyard important? If you can borrow some really nice patio furniture to show off your lovely patio, that would be nice. Any final suggestions on how I can make the exterior of my house even more appealing? Having your trees and bushes trimmed could be an investment. What should I do to get ready for the open house? Your house needs to be as clean and uncluttered as possible. Can we stay in the house while it's being shown? No one is to be in the house during the open house except for the realtor and the potential buyers who are looking at the house. Can we leave our dog in the backyard during the open house? Absolutely no pets are to remain in the house during open house. Take them with you or board them, please. I have a lot of expensive jewelry and am afraid to leave it in the house. We will do our best to watch over your things, but expensive jewelry and guns need to go with you. <laughs> How will we know when to come home? The open house will last from 11 o'clock until 4 o'clock. Is there anything special I should do to get ready for our open house this weekend? Just make sure that your house is perfectly clean and that everything is put away. My husband wants to watch the game, and we were wondering if he could stay in his den during your open house. Uh, everyone in the household must leave the premises before the potential buyers arrive. Can the cat stay on the bed during open house? No pets are allowed at the open house. Maybe your neighbor would let your pets stay over there for a few hours. Where can I hide my expensive jewelry? If you have a safe, put your jewelry in there. Otherwise, please take your valuables with you. Will you let us know when everyone has left? Usually the open house lasts until 4 o'clock. If this one ends earlier, I will call you on your cell phone. What suggestions do you have for preparing the open house on Saturday? The two most important things are that your home is clean and clutter-free. My mother is old and wants to stay in her room during the open house. Absolutely no occupants of the house are to be present during an open house. We have several pet snakes and would like them to stay in the garage during open house. You wouldn't want someone to hate your house because they can't stand animals, would you? Your pets need to disappear for a bit. Will someone be watching to make sure my expensive jewelry doesn't get ripped off? We have two realtors to keep an eye on things at all times. But please, don't keep valuable jewelry or guns in your home when it is being shown. What time will the open house be over? You can come home at 4 o'clock if you like. 
If it is rainy and slow, I will call you if I decide to end it a little early. So, how much did the buyers bid on our house? Your asking price was $300,000. The potential buyers offered $290,000. <laughs> That's a great offer. Yes, it is a good offer. Before you accept, we should look at some details. What else do we need to look at? They want you to pay all closing costs. Of course, they are making the sale contingent on an inspection showing no major defects in the house. I think that sounds fair. You could put in a counter offer, but I know that these buyers also have their eye on another house down the street. I definitely want to accept their offer. Excellent decision. I will notify them immediately. I am so anxious to hear what the bid was on our house. Remember that we set the asking price at $3,000. The first offer is $290,000. That's way better than I expected so early in the game. The offer is definitely a good one. But let's make sure we look at the whole picture. What are the other considerations? They want you to pay for the inspection, but they want to pick out the inspector. If the house is defective, they will want out of the deal. I don't have a problem with that. You could make them a counteroffer, but I know that you need a timely sale. Please notify the buyers that I have accepted their offer. I think that you're making the right choice. I will phone the buyers right away. What did the buyers offer us on our house? With the original asking price at $300,000, the buyers are willing to pay $290,000. <laughs> I am really pleased with that offer. I agree that the offer is in the ballpark. We need to consider everything before we accept. Besides the selling price, what else is there to consider? They want you to pay to have the cracks in the back wall fixed and a couple of the roof tiles replaced. All of that is acceptable to me. A counter offer by you is always a possibility, but their price is very close to your asking price. You could risk losing the sale. I wish to officially accept their offer. This is a win-win situation for both you and the buyer. I am sure that you will both be happy with your decision. I hear the young couple that came by the other day made an offer on the house. Yes, the potential buyers made an offer this morning. Is the offer a good offer? The offer is pretty good. You asked 300000 and they offered 280000 I would be willing to take 290000 but no lower. You could make a counter offer of $290,000. Would you like to do that? Yes. I would like to make the counter offer. I will make the counteroffer immediately by phone. What if they don't accept the counteroffer? They can make a counteroffer themselves or state that their first offer stands. I got a message on my machine that you received an offer on my house. Yes. The offer came in late last night. It was too late to call you. Is the offer as high as we were hoping for? They offered $280,000, and you were asking $300,000. They are definitely in the ballpark. I was prepared to go a little lower, but more like $290,000.
would you like to make a counteroffer of two hundred ninety thousand dollars? I definitely would like to make a counteroffer. I will fax them the counteroffer right away. What if my counteroffer gets turned down? They have an option of making a counteroffer, or they can just reject your counteroffer. Your office called and said that an offer came in on our house. Yes. The offer came in less than an hour ago. How good of an offer did we receive? Their bid was $280,000. And you said that you wanted $300,000. Their bid is a reasonable start. We built a little leeway into the asking price, but I don't want to accept less than $290,000. Sellers frequently make a counteroffer. Would you like to counteroffer $290,000? I think that a counteroffer would be wise at this point. I will contact their agent right away with your counteroffer. What should we do if they don't like the counteroffer? If the seller doesn't want to accept your counteroffer, they can reject it or come up with a counteroffer of their own. My assistant called and said that you had received a response to our counteroffer. Yes, the buyers called me just an hour ago. Did they accept the counteroffer? They came back with their own counteroffer of 5000 less than you wanted. What do they think about their counteroffer? I think that this is a good offer. They also would like to have a 90-day escrow to allow them to sell their home. The length of the escrow is not that huge uh, issue with us. They also want to sell contingent on a good building inspection. That is reasonable. And I accept the conditions. I will let them know that you have accepted their counteroffer. They will be very pleased. I had a message on my phone that the buyers had responded to our counteroffer. Yes, the response just came through on the fax machine. Was the counteroffer acceptable to them? They made their own counteroffer of 5000 less than you proposed. Do you feel their counteroffer is reasonable? Their offer is a good one. They also want to have a short escrow, as they have already sold their home and are ready to move in. We can accommodate the buyer's desire for an escrow length of their choosing. They want their building inspector to approve the quality of their house. I would expect that to be the case and accept their counteroffer. I will contact the buyers immediately and let them know of your acceptance of their counteroffer. I'm sure they will be excited. I was calling in to see if there had been any response from the buyers regarding my counteroffer. Yes, the buyer's agent just contacted me while I was at the open house. Did they state whether the counteroffer worked for them or not? They almost accepted your counteroffer price, but want to go a little lower. They are offering 5000 less than your counteroffer. In your professional opinion, is this a good offer? Personally, in today's market, I would accept the offer. They also want a short escrow as they feel that the interest rates are low right now. We can either lengthen or shorten the escrow for the buyer. They want to make sure that the inspector says that there are no major problems with the house before this is a solid deal. Of course. The house will have to pass a basic inspection, but we accept their counteroffer. The buyers will be happy to hear that you have accepted their counteroffer. 
Hi. I was calling to see if the buyers had accepted my counteroffer. Yes, actually, just call back with a counteroffer of their own. Is the counteroffer close to the asking price? The counteroffer is for ten thousand less than your asking price. I didn't really want to go that low in my pricing. I agree that that price is too low. Your home is in good shape, and you should get a better price for it. What should I do at this point? Since you don't want to go any lower, I can notify them that you are rejecting their latest offer. Can you take care of that for me and get back to me? I will let them know that your counter offer was the lowest price that you will accept. Has there been any word about whether the buyers have accepted my counter offer? Yes, I was going to call you this morning. Your buyers have responded with a counter offer. Is the counter offer a good one? They are now offering ten thousand less than your asking price. That is really a bit lower in price than I would like to go. I think that your feelings are valid. You have a beautiful home and can afford to wait for a better offer. What is the next step? You can flat out reject their offer. And see what they come up with. I would like to notify them that I am rejecting their offer. I will notify the buyers that you will not accept their counter offer. I was wondering if the buyers have accepted my counter offer. Yes, I, I just faxed you the information an hour ago. The buyers have a counter offer for you. How much do they counter offer? They are offering to pay ten thousand less than your asking price. I am not really ready to accept that low price. I wouldn't accept that price either. Your home is in a good area and should command a high price. Where do we go from here? We should notify them that you are rejecting their current offer. They might choose to offer a higher price. Please let the buyers know that I am rejecting their offer. Hmm. <laughs> I will take care of that right away. They may or may not raise their offer. Your office called and left a message that several offers had come in on our home. Yes, we received three offers in one day for our home. Were the offers for a good price? One offer was for the full asking price, one slightly below, and one above. Well, I'm going to accept the highest bid, of course. Actually, there are a few things to consider other than who is offering the most money. What other factors do I need to consider? We need to consider the likelihood of the buyers actually being able to purchase the house. How do we check on the buyer's ability to purchase our home? We would check to see if these buyers are pre-qualified for the loan amount they need. This information will help you make a good decision. When we get all the information, then I will make my decision. When you make that decision, I will present it to the buyers. I received your email about the many purchase offers for my house. It has been quite a busy day regarding your home. We just received three offers. Did the potential buyers offer a good price? There were offers above and below your asking price, as well as one exactly for the asking price. The highest bid is always the best. We need to look at the big picture in deciding which bid to accept. What things would you like me to look at? Just because a buyer offers the money doesn't mean that they actually have the credit to purchase the home. How do I get the information about a buyer's ability to afford to buy a home? We will check to see if any of the buyers have a large down payment. A large down payment of available cash would be a good sign. I will wait for that information and give you my answer. Please.
let me know when you made your decision and I will contract your buyers. My friend said that you had called regarding multiple offers for my home. The open house was quite a success. Last night we received three offers on your home. I am anxious to hear how good an offer we received. Offers above and below the asking price came in. What was right on the money? Let's go with the highest bid. We need to look at a number of factors in deciding which bid to go with. What matters besides getting the money for the house? We need to make sure that these potential buyers are actually qualified to even purchase a home. I don't even know where to begin checking our buyer's credit information. We can check to see if these buyers have already sold their current home. This will make them desirable. <laughs> I think that gathering that information will be helpful to me. Please let me know if I can further assist you in making your decision. I heard that the potential buyer is interested in me carrying part of a loan for him. Carrying part of a loan can be a good or a bad thing, depending on the circumstances. What would be an advantage of me carrying a note on the house? <laughs> if you don't need the money, you can earn a fairly good interest rate. Why does my buyer want me to carry part of his loan? In this economy, buyers sometimes have trouble getting a loan, even when they have good credit. What are the risks to me? The risk is that the market could drop drastically and the owner would walk away. How long will I need to commit to financing this loan? You need to make an agreement with a buyer as to how long you will carry the note. My potential buyer has asked me to carry part of his loan. The decision to carry part of a loan might be advantageous to you or problematic. Why would I ever want to carry a note on a house? It is a type of investment that can offer a fairly steady return over a set period of time. Why is my buyer requesting that I carry part of his loan? Oftentimes, buyers are well able to afford the home, but unable to qualify for a loan. Are there any risks in carrying a second mortgage? You are basically betting on the fact that the home is not going to drastically fall in price. This could leave you with a house that is not worth much. Will I be financing this loan for a set period of time? That is entirely up to you and the buyer. If the purchaser of your home wants you to carry part of the loan, is that good? Carrying a loan could be good or bad for you as a seller. Why would it be a good thing to carry a note on my own house? For investors who can afford to have their money tied up, it can offer a fairly nice return. What advantage is my buyer looking for in having me carry him on paper? We are seeing more and more buyers who are not able to qualify for a loan and are able to take out a second mortgage with the owner. Can I lose my money if I carry a second mortgage? It is an investment and carries some risks. You are counting on the housing market to not go into a tailspin. Is there a certain amount of time that I'll be carrying this loan? The buyer and the seller set the year for the loan to come due. I really need help knowing what to do about transferring the deed on my house. The work of legally transferring the deed of your house will be taken care of in escrow. What is the first thing that they will do? The first thing they do is a title search to make sure that there are no liens against your property. What if I have a lien against my property? Your home cannot be sold until you clear all liens. 
how long will the escrow take? You can control some aspects of the length of your escrow, but not all. Complete all paperwork in a timely fashion. So, how many days will it take? An escrow can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days. I know nothing about transferring the deed of my home. The escrow company will be doing all of the work in transferring your deed. What is the first step in transferring my deed? A deed transfer always includes a title search to make sure that there are no outstanding liens against the property. What if they discover a lien against my property? A title transfer cannot occur until you clear all liens. Will my escrow take long? To move your escrow along, it is important to supply all documents that are requested in a timely fashion. What is the length of the average escrow? The average escrow will last anywhere from 30 to 90 days. I think that I'm going to hire a lawyer to help me transfer the deed of my house. Don't worry, the escrow company will be helping us with the transferring of the deed. How do they begin the process of transferring the deed? A title search is necessary to make sure that there are no liens against your property. What will happen if they find a lien against my property? All liens against the property must be cleared before the sale of your house can continue. How can I shorten my escrow? Make sure that you accurately complete all paperwork in a timely fashion. This will help shorten the length of your escrow. How many days will it take to close the escrow? 30 to 90 days is about how long it takes to complete an escrow. Do you have any helpful hints for preparing to move out of my home? The first thing I would do is to make a list of what needs to be done. Then number the items as to what can be done ahead of time. What kinds of things should be on my list? First would probably be to get rid of any extra things that you have by having a garage sale. That is a good idea because I have way too much junk. You also should schedule your moving van in advance. Can I begin packing things ahead of time? Yes, just keep in mind what you won't be using in the near future and pack those items first. Should I schedule my utilities to be shut off? You need to work that out ahead of time with your utility companies and the new owners. I was wondering if you had any useful suggestions for how to prepare for our moving day. Make a prioritized list of what needs to be done and when. Many things can be done ahead of time. Can you give me some suggestions for my list? Many people have a garage sale to avoid moving things that they no longer use. That would certainly cut down on the price of moving. Make sure that you take the time to schedule your moving van. Would it be okay to get a head start on my packing? Begin by packing things that you don't frequently need. Save only a few things until right before your moving date. When should I have my utilities shut off? It is best for you and the new owners to coordinate the transfer of the utilities and what needs to be turned off and on. I want our moving day to go smoothly and I'm open to your suggestions. I would suggest that you make a list and check off the items as you go along. The list will get shorter as your moving date approaches. What things do people usually put on their moving list? One thing that can be done ahead of time is to get rid of excess stuff by having a garage sale. That would mean a lot less time wasted in packing up our things. List scheduling your moving van as an item on your to-do list. Do people ever start packing a month or so before moving? You can certainly start packing things that you won't be using right away. 
I don't know if I should have my utilities shut off or leave them on for the people who are moving in. You could simply have all the utilities shut off on the day you move out, but you might want to coordinate with the new owners. Is the moving van here yet? Yes, it just pulled up to the curb. Here we go. Could you double check and make sure that everything made it into the boxes? I have already done that. Would you like me to put our suitcases into the car? Yes, this would be a good time to do that. I am so glad that we took the time to pack our essentials into suitcases. It will tide us over until the van arrives at our new home. Would this be a good time to pack the frozen food into the ice chest? I think that we should wait until the very last minute to do that. I am going to take the dog for a walk so that he doesn't get too stressed out as the movers are working. Well, let's get started sweeping up and do a last minute cleaning. Do you think that the moving van has arrived? It's coming down the street, even as we speak. Could I ask you to make one last check to make sure that everything got into the boxes? <laughs> Relax! Do you need me to put the suitcases in the car? Yes. Let's do that right now. It was such a good idea to pack the suitcases to have some things with us while we're waiting for the moving van to arrive on the other end. Maybe we could pack the frozen food into the ice chest? Let's wait until the van is almost completely loaded to take care of that. I am sure happy that we dropped the cats off at the kennel so they aren't freaking out. I'm going to start sweeping up the floor. I want the new owners to not have to clean up a mess. Could you check and see if the moving van is out there yet? It just arrived. They are parking at the curb right now. Do me a favor and do one last walkthrough to check for anything that may not have gotten packed. We've already double checked everything. Should we put the suitcases in the car? It is the perfect time to take care of that. I am so happy that we didn't pack all of our clothes into boxes. The suitcase of clothes will help us to get what we need until our boxes arrived. Should we empty the freezer into the ice chest? Let's do a few more things and then take care of that as one of the last things we do. Deciding to keep the birds at the neighbors until we leave was a good idea. Let's sweep the floor on our way out so we don't leave too big of a mess behind.